Okay, people, this is going to be another episode of Matt's Magical Review. Now, this is a very important episode, as I'll be reacting to possibly the last Toy Story movie in probably ever. We'll be reacting to Toy Story 4, so now, uh, yes, I already got my Mickey ears, thank you very much. Now, uh, where are the signs? Oh, there they are. Um, okay, where are my, where's my signs, Dan? Seriously, still haven't found it. What am I paying you? Well, okay, uh, I apologize. <laughs> but do you at least have the thumbnail? You have the thumbnail ready? You do? Well, get a move on. Let's get it on. Before I begin, this vi this video will contain spoilers for the Toy Story 4 movie. So if you haven't watched Toy Story 4, I highly recommend you watch it before watching this video. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Alright, it should be good. It should be good. Hello all you Disney and Frozen lovers out there. I am the Disney enthusiast and citizen of Arendelle for Life, Matthew Avery. Welcome to another edition of the Disney... Oh, that's the wrong sign. Welcome okay, to another edition of the Disney Enthusiast Matthew Avery's Matt's Magical Review. Now today is going to be very special as I'm going to be uh, doing my official review of what I thought of Toy Story 4. I went to go see the day it came out in theaters. Uh, now, uh, this, these things are going to be out of order, so bear with me, okay? Uh, please and thank you. Uh, after I said this scene, some, some of the trails, I... I was for sure like Dammy Gabby was going to be the main villain in this movie. Well, it turns out she wasn't the villain at all. All Gabby got wanted was Woody's voice box because her she was defected right out of her packaging. She never got loved by a child, and she wants that she wanted that chance to be loved by a child. And um, let's say uh, when when Woody thought that she was still the bad guy, uh, his voice box always got torn out of him. It turns out those being trail crystal always st still remind me goosebumps. They have mad sewing skills and they're just good guys as well. So they uh basically they were like well so we'll help we'll help you get that voice box out of you and it won't hurt a bit. And it didn't. Woody's voice box came out just fine and Gabby Gabby got her new voice box. And here's the next thing, uh Forky who happened to be a handful Near the beginning of the movie. Uh, Forky, when he was created, he was just created uh, literally out of trash. And uh, Woody wanted to make sure that Bonnie was always with Forky, no matter what. Uh, whenever Forky tried to escape, Woody was there. And he, barely, he was very tired during the night time. That night, uh, Forky apparently escaped. Uh, I didn't notice how both people ended up getting separated from Woody in the gang. Turns out Woody was going to go save RC Racer after Andy that had to go in because of the rain. And apparently Woody, he got RC Racer. Unfortunately, the, the window was closed on him before he and Slinky could get in. And he saw Bonnie, he saw Bo Peep get pulled away. And he tried to get him, tried to get her. Bo Peep said, I'm not Andy's toy, I'm Molly's. Let me go, I'll be alright. Okay, uh, here's something that really brought tears to everyone. Bo Peep, Bo Peep, it was a great movie of all. I was going to say, Woody stayed with Bo Peep. He passed the sheriff's badge to Jesse because. Throughout the movie, Bonnie, I don't think she had much feelings for um, Woody as she did in Toy Story 3. Woody was left in the clo closet constantly and his badge was being taken by uh, Jesse. Near the end, um, it was uh, near, near the end that, that Woody and the gang were going to go join Wo Wayne was gonna go join the gang. Then boys told 
Woody that Bonnie will be all right. And before he officially said their goodbyes, Woody passed it, passed his sheriff ba sheriff's badge onto Jesse, like a passing of the torch thing. By the way, a Buzz mistook his uh, inner voice as the buttons on his chest. And what what he meant by inner conscience, inner voice, is his conscience. What? But Buzz actually that made a hilarious moment. But here's the Buzz told what Buddy that Bonnie would be okay. Molly would, Bonnie would not miss Woody. She'll be just fine. All the other toys will hold on to work for her. And uh, that was very heartwarming. That Buzz would tell Woody that, hey, you can stay with Belle. We'll take care of Bonnie for you. Now I'm going to take a short break and I'll be right back. Okay, folks, thank you for that short break. I need to get a glass of water because it is warm in here. I'm actually wearing two t shirts. I don't want to tarnish my uh, YouTube attire. Anyway, Woody, he, he would not follow Bo's plan. Woody would not. Like cooperate, like he want to do his own way. Bo has a certain idea, and uh, yeah, and apparently um, Bo wasn't having it. Like, wait, you gotta follow the plan. I want to get Porky. That's all I'm focused about. That's all I focused on. And uh, apparently, he said some words that really made Bo mad, and or I should say upset. And apparently. He walked out on him and left him alone. And he went to go get Forky. Oh, Gabby Gabby. She found her forever home. Well, let's say her pl her plan was to get a girl from an antique shop. Her her plan was to go get a little girl named Harmony. When she got that voice box from Woody. Everything always went according to plan minus one eating tea eatsy teensy little uh problem. The girl wasn't interested. And uh Woody convinced the uh Gabby Gabby to go come with him and I'll take you to Bonnie. Then all of a sudden Gabby Gabby saw this poor little girl crying because she was lost. Gabby Gabby said, you know, I won't go help that little girl. Woody obliged and uh there's two stuffed animals from the very, very first Toy Story trailer. Go to baseball to get the girl's attention, and the little girl like she was arrested right from the start, and she went and get help from security, and she was reunited with her parents because uh, she was basically lost. And uh, Gabby, Gabby found her forever home. No, I. Forky found a companion. Now this was during the credits. Forky, he is a year past, and uh, Bonnie's now in the first grade. Uh, Jesse said uh, Bonnie made a friend in class. It turns out that friend happened to be a, a knight named Knifey who had to be a girl. Now Forky, Forky told her that we're all toys, and I'll tell you everything. Uh, Porky probably has a possible love interest. In and uh, Dukaboom. Dukaboom, he was haunted by, by that. He couldn't make real jumps and his kids were not happy about that and his kid rejected him. And he first jump, he was haunted. But the second jump, he was able to uh, close his eyes. He was able to do the most epicus, epicus, epicus of crashes. I know epicus, epicus is not a word. I made it up. Uh, we gotta talk about, okay, basically Duke Kaboom, for first he was very, uh, let's just say he was very uh, iffy about doing a high jump because uh, his kid is rejecting him. Later on he was like, there's nothing to be afraid of, I'm, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, we gotta talk about that post credit scene. During the movie we saw three combat Carls, one of them kept, kept getting hung after offering a high five. 
and uh, Duke Boom. Well, let's say he took over for the light bulb in the post credits, after, in the after credits. He, he to jump on the eye, doing various poses, and all of a sudden he, the the little G, you know, the combat, car, the little combat Carl, ended up reaching for a high five, getting wanting a high five. To kaboom, then he up, both had a high five. And uh that takes that was basically probably the most amazing of Pixar Pixar intros I've ever seen intro and endings I've ever seen. Now here's the thing I wanna really talk about. The tribute to Don Rickles and Bud Lucky. First we'll talk about Bud Lucky. Uh Bud Lucky he was the voice of uh, Chuckles in Toy Story 3, and basically he, Bud Lucky was responsible for the initial design of Sheriff Woody, and unfortunately he passed away last year and never got a chance, he never got the chance to see Toy Story 4 in action, so uh, they paid tribute to him for it, and uh, Don Rickles, if you folks don't know what Don Rickles is, he's a very famous com comedian, my dad's heard about him. Don Rickles was the voice of Mr. Potato Head, and he signed on to do Toy Story 4, but unfortunately he passed away before he could record any voice lines. So they uh, used archival footage, recording footage recordings to use his voice, and they basically put a few tributes to him. They put the tribute to him at the end. Don Rickles, thank you for being Mr. Potato Head. Hope you, oh, I hope you make a ton of laughs up there. Okay, okay. Here's the best part about the entire video. What were my thoughts on the movie? <clears throat> it was to infinity and beyond. Like it, it had humor. It had moments that made you cry. It had moments that made you smile. And uh, I loved it. Like, knowing that this is probably going to be the last Disney movie, like, the last Toy Story for this part, knowing that this is going to possibly be the last Toy Story movie, even though they have, the drugs haven't ruled out making a Toy Story 5, honestly, about the directors, I would say, let's leave it there. We exp we showed what happened to Bo Peep, and, uh, we sent Woody up on, Woody and the gang up on a high note. Let's just end it there and call it an amazing trilogy. But thank you to all the folks at Pixar who made Toy Story, the Toy Story franchise, what it is now. And uh, the first Toy Story, I was not even born yet when it was released. It was released in 95. I was born five years later. And uh, now knowing that the Toy Story 4 comes out, I'm able to go watch it. Kudos to me. And uh, two thumbs up, two stars. No, no, I give it infinity stars because it was that great. Of a movie. I even kept my popcorn bag when I went to the movie theater. I might write a little message on myself that says, Do not throw away from Toy Story 4. And uh, I just want to say, great movie. And I, I look forward to Pixar's movies in the future. And my real thoughts took my heart. It made me cry. It made me cry inside. It's raining outside, and I got the window open. I just want to say, uh, Toy Story 4 was amazing, and, uh, it's, here's the thing, it was actually supposed to be the love and st love story between both people and Woody, instead it was turned to an adventure tale. I like that. I would love to either or. In terms of the adventure one was fun, amazing, spectacular. Magical and to infinity and beyond. Overall, the movie was amazing and uh, I wouldn't have made it any other way. It's perfect. Okay, folks, that is my official review of Toy Story 4. Thank you for watching episode number two of Matt's Magical Reactions. Now, remember, if you liked this episode, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. That's, that really helps me out. And if you want to go check out my Disney Enthusiast Magic Baby YouTube channel, go check out my other amazing, ma amazing magical videos I made. And don't forget to hit up that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can 
see when I make my next video. If you want to follow me on social media, and my Instagram is Matt Avery of Arendelle, all in lowercase. Matt Avery Disney is my Twitter, all caps. And Matt Avery Disney is my TikTok account, the M A D, and Matt Avery Disney is capitalized. And uh, my my my, my Snapchat is Maze Down Dash Avery. And he's a big part. And remember. To keep calm and keep Disneying on. For all you Disney, for all you Frozen, for all you Toy Story lovers out there, I am the Disney enthusiast and since I'm in my life and Jeff Life Matthew Avery, remind you to always believe in yourself. I'll see you in the next episode. I wish you a mighty to infinity and beyond.